and sewer scan to one half parsec. On screen. Weapons are at maximum. It's more like a big ball of wibbly wobbly, tiny whiny stuff. Open a channel. All vipers, break, break, break! Impossible to see the future. This is the emergency holographic doctor speaking. You wish to your energy talking. Helmsman laid a new course. Now, it's going Welcome to, to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. Engage. Joining me today, we have writer DC Danes from the book series The Crisp, the Star Crystal. I'll get it right. Oh, Got it wrong a few times. I'll get it right. <laughs> and also joining me today is Ian Hollis from the Fanning Out Podcast. So, um, the company. DC, how's things going all the way over in Strange. Space? Yeah, not bad, mate. Had a bit of a uh, uh, golf ball slash tennis ball hailing on the weekend, so that was quite unpleasant, but the weather's finding up now, so past the storminess. Well, it's good to hear. How about you, Ian? How's things in New South Wales? Um, same as always, really. No, windy, actually. Surprisingly windy today. Skepticism. Man you know, conquered his most of Aussies, fear. Something that really doesn't happen. Too many Americans. <laughs> it's about time we took over the world. So, the age of the anyway, world. One podcast at a time. Yeah. <laughs> but the gift of immortality about, was withheld. Um, your book, the, the, the Star Crystal. Protected I keep going to call it the Crystal the Star, which doesn't work. <laughs> the crystal Star, no, that doesn't quite work. But, uh, <laughs> um, the Star Crystal. Uh, the first book um, got Baby published... Kane. Nearly, nearly three years ago, um, Ruling a world by a local publishing firm. A uh, couple of years to really, really hit it hard at the conventions and everything else. I've sold uh, over 700 with the first one now. Um, so I'm going quite, quite well with that. Uh, second book came out a few months ago, and I got picked up by Tokyo Wonderco, which is a local anime manga shop, the biggest one in uh, the Perth CBD, actually, um, because I've got this cute little dragon in it called Blink, and I've even got... Th- and I've got 3D... <laughs> is that why it was so staticky? <laughs> Aussies do it best. <laughs> I have a saying, if you are going to fail, make it epic. <laughs> yeah, that's actually one of the rules at my work. If you're going to make a mess, make a big one. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'll just do a really quick reintroduction. Uh, my <laughs> catastrophic fail. We have um, DC Dane, writer of the Star Crystal book series, and Ian Hollis from the Fanning Out podcast joining us. Um, so DC was just telling us about uh, his book, The Star Crystal. So I'll let him get back to that after fixing my stuff up. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well done, well the, done. The problem is I don't actually have a live feed of the... Um, I've got three channels. I've only got a live feed of two of them. The third one just sort of does its own thing in the background. And if I'm not paying attention, it can <laughs> gain a mind of its own. You're my dragon. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. So you want me to start again? I'll yeah. I'll, I'll make I'll make it brief. <laughs> three years three years ago, I got published uh, by a local publishing house, um, and I took my book to the conventions. Since then, I've um, been picking up quite a decent following. Um, over seven hundred copies of the first book sold now. Uh, I picked up a sponsorship from a local local um, from Perth, biggest one in Perth, um, called Tokyo Underground. Does anime, manga, absolutely brilliant shop, beautiful people. Sounds like the sort of place I'd love to move into. Yeah, it's absolutely brilliant. I love it. And um, the fact that I've got my little dragon from the, the series, Blink, um, made into 3D, 3D printed models, goes down a treat as well. So I have them in a puppet. That's really cool. I saw them online. They're, they're absolutely fabulous. I wish uh, I had yeah. a 3D printer. 3D printers are cool. Which I had one too. <laughs> <laughs> the Armadale Library down here does them for me. Yeah, one of my mates up, up here has actually got one. He's always printing out little Stargates or 
cube things or dragons or carcasses how's, or how's the quality on those? Are these like the ones you can get from Office Works? Or are they a bit um, more industrial? Uh, I don't know. I've seen one at Office Works yet, but the quality of my dragons is insane. Um, it does help that the guy that did it, um, did the 3D models originally, is absolutely brilliant at what he does. Um, so the detail on him is just insane. But saying that, anywhere from one and a half to three hours to clean up a model after they printed. Yeah, the, the mate I've got up here that prints them out, he's actually built the 3D printer himself. So he's done wow. all the printing on all the programming and all the spells and whistles, and he's always tinkering with it and making it better. So, yeah. Impressive. Yeah. yeah it's... They're, not, they're not cheap either. They cost them about sort of 300 bucks, but he prints out kits from it. So he can literally replica replicate his own thing with a couple of pieces of metal bars and he makes them up and sells them online. So just... Well, the printers? Yeah. I just never have enough money to actually buy one. You'll have to contact him for me if they're only 300 bucks because they're 1200 <laughs> excess over here. Wow. 1000 to $1,200. Yeah, that's why I don't print. His, his, <laughs> only, his only prints stuff sort of half of the A4 size of A5 A yeah. and half of A4. Yeah, 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 my my dragons aren't that much bigger. No, no, your dragons would definitely come out of his size printer. Yeah, I need his printer. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I've said that a few so, times. It's it's the it's the it's the way of the future. I mean, as an author, I mean, I'm passionate about my characters and that to see him come to life as a 3D image, just absolutely insane. So yeah, it would be. Big sounds big draw card too. Sounds like you got about half dozen budgies flying around your head. Oh, they're in the background. <laughs> I'm glad I'm using my headphones so that my birds don't hear that or they would be going bonkers as well. I got my headphones in here until you just said it. It's like, oh. <laughs> Man, don't worry about it. I just find it funny. It's Sorry. Weird, sort of hearing somebody else's birds. It's like the, like the whole Aussie, Aussie accent thing on a podcast. It just doesn't work. Oh, uh, well, I am. Um... Right, anyway. I've got a pair of uh, lovebirds there I got given as hand tame ones and they were so territorial you couldn't even feed them. So I put an S box in there and they got eggs. It's like, okay, they were nesting. That Let works. them have babies and see what happens. <laughs> uh, a couple of extra bucks so, here. Yeah. But um, yeah, the, the, the whole idea behind my story was pretty much I had this voice in my head that just started going. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies. And I just wrote it down and it just kept going. Um, so you've raised, which are feline humanoids, a little dragon called Blink that has the biggest eyes you'd ever seen. They cover his whole head. And when he blinks, he steals all the shinies. So a <laughs> uh, kid with his hand in the cookie jar, he just loves shinies. Sort of sounds like, um, what's her name? Kaylee on uh, Farscape. Everything's shiny, Captain. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't got that far. <laughs> With your approach to story writing, do you just write or do you have like a, a an approach um, to character and story development or do you just write? No. Um, I got told I was shit when I was 16, so I stopped writing. And then at 34, voices in my head, so they had to get out. So um, I just started writing. Um, for that. Um, <laughs> I know, and they're trying to give it to me, but I keep saying I need the voices. Stop taking the voices away. So, yeah. there, there's little ones that say I'm hungry, and other ones that go, but I love you. I would give you food if I had some. And then there's a voice in the background goes, I love you, little Johnny. I'll feed you. But anyway, we won't go there, there today. Yeah, as far as close as mine get to that is, I start fires. <laughs> that could be more detrimental to your health. <laughs> so, but yeah, no, my, my characters develop themselves. They're, they've they've all got a mind of their own, especially Teller and, and Blink. He's just a little shit, to put it politely. He just <laughs> keeps chucking the scenes and stealing things and blowing smoke in people's faces. And, so, the age of, look, a blatantly obvious distraction, Chaney. Chaney, and the kids love him. Kids absolutely love him. So I've had to write a kid series because, you know, having a five or six-year-old kid watch him tear someone's face apart 
when he gets a little bit territorial. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like you base um, the dragon on your bird, Blink on the bird. No, I, I actually reckon he's got, got the Wolverine Cox. He's all cute and cuddly, and then when he gets pissed off, he just rips you to shreds. <laughs> But you know, it does, especially if he's the enemy. <laughs> he's not so good if he's a friend. <laughs> so, but yeah, so yeah, the characters sort of come out on their own. It's a bit of a problem at times. I've got a character named Rod, and you know the guy that you love to hate. You know he, he sticks his finger up his nose and stirs his coffee with it and things like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, he's he's definitely in the book. And people love me, and then they hate me, and then they love me, and then they hate me. So it's, it's good to get that interaction off people when they they love you that much. They come into work and they go, "I love you, I love you, I love you." And the next day they come in and I hate you, I hate you, and hate you, and they start punching you. <laughs> yeah, you sort of ask them why. I've got a couple of people that I know like that. <laughs> it's pretty good. I, I get it on more than one occasion, so that means I'm doing my job right. <laughs> Do you have, you said it's a series of books, yes? Yes, I've yeah. got the first one and second one written at the moment and published. Um, okay. Do you have an end in sight or are you just going to keep writing? Um, I have a lot of voice recording, like 280 hours of voice recording for the books. Oh, wow. 14, 15 prologues. But the idea is, is the first series will be three to four books. Um, and then three to four books, three to four books. So each book itself will, will start and end. However, it'll be have an end goal, three to four books, because mm -hmm. there's nothing worse than having to read 13 books of The Wheel of Time or something. Yeah. To just find out what happened at the beginning. So, but saying that, I don't write the books, they write themselves and the characters write themselves. So mm -hmm. my end game might be different to theirs. So. I mean, my characters, for instance, um, Chelsea, um, the amount of smart-ass comedy comes up with, it's just like, you know, you weren't supposed to say that. Um, no, you weren't supposed to do that. And all the boys are put in their place on so many occasions. It's just like, yeah, okay. This is supposed to be a book for boys, but I think it ends up being a book for both in the end. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the best way to get the best uh, market. Have you, have well, you... dumb. I was just going to say, have you ever considered doing sort of little released online only short stories? Um, I actually have done that already. Um, part of the Secret Santa initiative, at the moment. Um, I managed to inherit that as a project. And what we all did is come up with an idea um, in our head that we wanted to see someone else write rather than ourselves. Put someone else in torture. And we threw all those in a hat and turned around and said, okay, this is what we want you to write. And I managed to get one that worked beautifully f for my new series called Wink, Blink and Nod. So that's a short story based on the dragon and an AI entity made up by um, Stephen Landry, another really awesome writer um, from America. And um, this android as well. It just works brilliantly, fits into the series. Um, I ended up getting stuck with four, well, stuck with, enjoyed writing them actually, four short stories, two co-written. Um, one with three first-person characters amongst all, anything else. <laughs> three first -person I was told the story was shit. And it didn't work. The one guy's head. <laughs> yeah, I, well, they're all in my head anyway, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm, that, I'm just thinking that's the twist at the end. It's like you follow these first-person characters, going, "Who the hell are we? What the hell's going on?" And, oh, yeah, who's head are we in? It's all, inside, <laughs> it's all inside Blink's head. <laughs> <laughs> nah. That one wasn't Blitzley, but yeah. No, well, I got told it was really crap as two first-person characters, and I had to rewrite it with third person. So I spent a day not writing anything and getting depressed, and then all of a sudden this other character jumped into my head, and he goes, dude, I'm narrating this. I'm first person, whether you like it or not. <laughs> so, yeah, and it worked brilliantly. Nice. <laughs> um, but... But yeah, no, so Secret Santa Initiative, that's actually going to be released at Christmas. And yeah, the idea is those are just short stories that people can have a read of and see some up-and-coming authors as well as some unknowns. Uh, and I've just had that final edited and it's come out really nice. So 
I'm very happy with that. Nice. If the book was ever translated to another medium, yep. would you want it as a TV series or would you prefer it as something like a movie or is it too much for a movie? Um, the first book could make a brilliant movie in itself, um, just the way it's written, um, because I see everything in movie format. Uh, second book, you could probably definitely follow up as a second movie. Saying that, I'm actually got a young lady working on the manga version of the prologue. Um, so that's quite exciting. And I've got a, a, I've got a small movie I've been working on myself just on the prologue. Um, might might be a bit amateurish, but it's going to be fun to watch. Put it out there and see what people think. Yeah. But but definitely, I would say it would start off brilliant movie. But with anything, you know, if you do it right, um, the sky's the limit. Yeah, exactly. Um. So anyway, we so had, um, we would add overdue the first break. So. I'm um, going to jump off to that. I'll play your ad first, and then we'll do the Infinity Blade tease. It'll go for about two minutes. So if you don't want to listen to the ads, then skip forward two minutes. If you are listening live, haha, you've got to listen to the ads. How do you feel? <laughs> <laughs> so I will try to not deafen you, because these some of these audio files are really loud, so I'll leave that thing down. Um, I will catch you guys on the other side of the break. Mm -hmm. Cool. And uh, yeah, we can we can talk through the break if they won't hear us. Mm -hmm. That's cool. I didn't hear us start off with. <laughs> yeah, well, they get they get a double dose of your trailer and half of the Infinity Blade trailer again. So it's always fun. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, onwards to the break. Before, before there was dust, before the air became poison, before the companies, strays, dragon smugglers, and thieves, will they prevail? www.thestarcrystal Remember, dare to blink and it may all be gone. It came as all discoveries do. Welcomed with excitement and skepticism. Man had conquered his most primal fear. Death. The age of the post-human would begin. But the gift of immortality was withheld. Protected by the powerful. The search for God was over. They had become eternal. They became the deathless. Ruling a world cleansed by fire time and again according to their approach. For a hundred thousand years, we've suffered under their undying shadow. We've had no hope. Until now. Welcome back to the Save Sci-Fi Podcast. I'm your host, David, and joining me, we still have DC and Ian. Ian is from the... I've lost my page. Lol. Fanning <laughs> Out. Fanning what? Out Podcast. I remembered. Slightly. Um, so, what do you guys do on the Fanning Out Podcast? What do you sort of get up to on that? Oh, uh, we just talk about different... Uh topics each week each week relating to various aspects of pop culture this past week we talked about lego lego 
yes, it's surprising how much you can get out of people. I didn't think we'd get a full episode out of Lego, but we were running out of time. Dude, Lego, yes. I have 36 boxes of it in my house. <laughs> I've never been to your house and I love it already. <laughs> my wife doesn't. Uh, I just have one big toy crate full of space Lego. I've got, I don't have that much in the way of Lego. I've got a couple of Lego Star Wars things. Most of the stuff I got's the Halo Mega Block stuff. Oh, I've yeah. Got a massive Halo Mega Block spaceship, the um, UNSC Forward Unto Dawn, I think it is. Which okay. Is absolutely just, huge. just getting back to writing novels at DC, what's your approach to do you sit down and say, okay, I'm going to write at least like three pages today, for example? No, no, I tried that. No, I tried that and it was came out crap. Um, right. So pretty much if the character's in my head and he wants to get out, he gets it's out. If he does, doesn't. Right. Okay. So, so it's, just, it's just weird. I, I write in a non-linear fashion. Yeah, so you're not necessarily writing something every single day. No. Um, up until a couple of weeks, I was full-time work as well. So uh, okay. the most I was doing for about the last year and a half, half was writing every couple of days. So I see. Mm. Yes, I should do <laughs> especially now i'm unemployed <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Fair. Right. Um, but I'm yeah gonna... talk talking about lego though i don't have a second room because my second bathroom is full of lego <laughs> <laughs> I, again i just have to restate i love your house already <laughs> and the best part is if someone breaks yeah. in you just start throwing random lego blocks on the ground they're not getting out of there anytime soon i don't think they'd get through the front door <laughs> <laughs> What do you guys think of the Lego dragons and droids and starships oh. and Millennium Falcons across my whole house? <laughs> oh. Oh. Uh, what do you guys think of the Lego yeah, knockoffs? Not my biggest fan. The like Lego the knockoffs. Le yeah, like like David was saying, Mega Blocks and the Transformers Creo um, and that stuff. Based on my experience, because I I went through a couple of years ago, back when the Halo stuff was fairly big. A bit of a Lego craving where I just wanted to make random stuff out of Lego. Mm -hmm. Lego Blocks is pretty good. It's definitely the best of the knockoffs. The stuff the Doctor Who stuff's made out of, I had mm -hmm. to glue that together to make the Dalek Mothership because it just constantly fell apart and it reached the point where I threw it against the wall. Ooh. So Have you? Very infuriating. Um, no. There was also, I did the, the Star Wars Lego stuff, that was really good, but. I Star, must... Star Wars is Lego. I know, that's what I said. The Star Wars Lego oh. stuff is really good. Oh. Um, yeah, that's that's the most out of this collection. The guy had been collecting since he was 19, sold it when he was 42. Wow. <laughs> Imagine uh, how much Lego's there. <laughs> the only thing I didn't like about the Lego, which Mega Bloks did better, was the instruction books. Oh, really? The Mega Bloks instruction books are really well done compared to Lego. Um, the... The, I also got some of the Creo Star Trek stuff. Yes, that got one of them. wasn't the best, but it was definitely better than the Doctor Who stuff. The Doctor Who stuff was just... It's the worst Lego I've ever had to play with trying to put something together. And I've had access being in Brisbane. There's lots of different random cheapy asian -y shops and they've got the no-name Asian brand Lego knockoffs, which is which are always useless. And this stuff was even more useless than that. So. Ooh, that's bad. Not good, yeah. yeah. You know it's a bad product when it's worse than a cheap Asian knockoff. Knockoff. Yeah. <laughs> so, whenever I see anyone, whenever I'm in an ABC store and I see someone buying it, it's like, go down to Bunnings, buy this stuff, you'll need it. <laughs> uh, yeah, no. See, only... uh, oh, no, go. You go. Sorry. The, the little, little figures on the box, that's the, the only annoyance with me because I've got the Call of Duty ones and it took me longer to put the figure together than to actually put the actual model together. They kept falling the apart. Mega blocks, the figures do fall apart a bit. Also got some um, best lock, which they did Stargate Lego stuff. Their stuff's pretty bad too. Yeah. Be Hang best on, I'm just going to mute myself while my dogs carry on. <laughs> yeah, the, the, the best lock stuff is really, really bad. So there's that. Anyway, what I'm going to do is I'm going to jump on it and I'm going to have a look 
quick look at um, the tournament results, which is something I promised I was going to do. What so, tournament? Um, we're doing a movie tournament on Save Sci-Fi. Each day we have a knockout tournament. Whoever, whichever movie gets the most votes moves on to the next round. So this time last week we had Barbarella versus Inception. Um, which one would you... Have you seen either of them, Ian? Barbarella versus in the Leo, Leo DiCaprio film. Yes. I haven't seen Barbarella, so I can't really comment. Okay, well, Barbarella won it. How about Eure uh, Europa Report versus Serenity? I haven't seen Europa Report. And how can you compare Serenity when anything? Anything. <laughs> yeah, anything. Serenity. Firefly. It's like Firefly. <laughs> Serenity won that one hands down. There, there wasn't even close. There was this, the next... Uh, I think it was Wednesday was this, was Starship Troopers movies versus Pacific Rim. Oh, uh, um, yeah, I didn't like specific Pacific Rim. So. Specific Rim. Specific Rim. <laughs> that, very, that's like the very unspecific rim. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would go with uh, probably uh, the Bug One. Starship yeah, Starship Troopers. Troopers. Yeah. The AI. The, 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 the first Starship Troopers was good. The second Starship Troopers was an alien ripoff, and it it wasn't that good. Was that and, the one that was almost like a porn movie? Um, that was the first one, I think. No, I know the first one wasn't like a porn movie. <laughs> it was the second one. The yeah, second the second one. one. The, the second one, they were stuck in a like a tower or something, weren't they? <laughs> I, I can't remember. Yeah, that's <laughs> was very. And the third one, they were the, the god bug and the religion and all that. That really sort of threw me off the third one. But the first one I enjoyed. And Pacific Rim, which has just been given a sequel, because, you know, stopping the apocalypse happened twice, apparently. Mm -hmm. involved. Uh, but anyway, the winner of that one was Starship Troopers. Unsurprising, really. Yeah. It was, it, yeah. it was actually surprisingly close, though. I think it was only two votes in it. Um, and then that came down to the likes. So then you got the last Starfighter versus Logan's Run. Um, uh, I'd put them equal. Uh, the last Starfighter won that one. Last Here's Starfighter. The what was the other one? Sorry, I'm Logan, Logan's Run. Missed that. Logan's Run. Yeah, the last Starfighter was brilliant, but yeah. Logan's Logan's Run. I just love the fact that you're going to kill people off at that age. It's fantastic. Yeah. Um, the, so, the, and do, do they do they actually feed them to them? They don't do that because that would be the perfect thing. It's just eat yourself. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> that's my writer coming out. The uh, David, you, the movies it's, you're comparing are so different to each other. Yeah, I know. What happens is we I put it forward to the the actual page and say, look, I'm at, we, next tournament's movie tournament. Give me a list. Okay. Um, everyone comments a list of sci-fi movies. And mm -hmm. then what I do is I put them in a randomizer. Oh, uh, okay. And then that's how things get paired up. That way, um, we I, I, that sort of avoids any biases, conscious or oh. not on my behalf. Yep. And it also means the pairings are, are random. They just, yeah. Um, so we've only got two pairs, uh, three pairs left. We've got Stranded versus Mars Attack. Stra I haven't seen Stranded. Uh, Mars Attack's won that one. Mars Attack. That's just, that's just wasn't one that of those, one of those that comedy thingy. Yeah, it's it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> um, then we had Sunshine versus Stealth. I haven't seen Stealth. I, I haven't seen either of. Oh, actually, no, Sunshine. Which yeah, I've, I haven't seen Sunshine. They were I've in... seen Stealth. I actually really enjoyed Stealth. The pr I found the problem with Sunshine is it slowly degraded into a horror film by the end of it. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty Sun, sure. Watch. Sunshine won that one. And then but stealth is that the one with the fighter jet? Yeah, and the hot body. How can they not win? Yeah. <laughs> um, and then we've got the last one, which is the one that just finished today: the Adventures of Buckaroo Banzai in the Eighth Dimension, which I just wrote for the in the name. Yeah, that's a classic. I've I've yeah. seen that. Versus that was brilliant. I love that. And they never finished it. Where was the next one? Battle Beyond the Stars. But I will go with Battle, Battle Beyond, Beyond the Stars. Battle Beyond the Stars. That's a TV series. Out of those two. Yeah, that was brilliant. You can't you can't compare them though. One's a TV series, one's a cult movie. Well, I've, uh, I've got people to suggest movies. <laughs> as far as I know it's a movie. I don't know. I've, ne I've seen Oh, Battle Beyond the Stars. 
Sorry, I'm thinking, yeah, the other one. I see you're talking about the, the ship with the big boobies. I have no idea. <laughs> yes. Yeah, Battle Beyond the Stars. Ship, yeah, boobies. Oh. <laughs> it's it's semi comedy. I don't think it was intentionally funny. Okay. So, <laughs> it was a big great move. We're going to jump off to another break, and when we come back. Hey, hang on, w- w- which one? What? Which one won out of those last two? Oh, oh I'm an idiot. Battle Beyond the Stars won. Yes, rightfully so. By one vote. Cowboy. By one vote. Yeah, oh. it was It was really close. It came down to... I checked, the, there was only like three likes on the picture because likes count as a vote as well as the comments. Yeah, it must and, have been the boobies. That so pushed yeah, it, the, it, it, it won it just. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go to another break. I'm going to add GB to the call. And when we come back, we're going to talk Hawaii Con. So you can look forward to that one. And And welcome back to the podcast. Um, joining us now, we have GB from Hawaii Con. Uh, Aloha, you guys. Yeah, good to see you finally get on. So we've got a four-man panel. So that's right what, on. About I'm time we did man. That, Wow. <laughs> so you guys got any questions for me to start this thing off, or uh, uh, how are we going to do this? Is it just a free for all? Uh, free for all is always fun. But um, I was just going to say. Who, um, at HawaiiCon, who turned up and did you get up to anything funny that you can sort of spill the beans on? Or is it all what happens at HawaiiCon stays at HawaiiCon? Uh, for the most part, yeah. The, there was some really incredible late night antics uh, that went on that really, yes, cannot be divulged. But um, it, it, I mean, it started off just so awesome. 
Aaron Douglas from Battlestar Galactica arrived, and I met him. Um, it was a late flight. And then um, Paul McGillian from Stargate Atlantis uh, came in, and they're really good buddies. And um, Paul, Paul had been drinking, let's say, for a while. I mean, drinking so much that he forgot his passport in Los Angeles. So, uh, I mean, he came off, Whoops. and he was totally hammered when he arrived at the hotel. And, and uh, Aaron, like, came up to meet him, and they, they ran at each other in slow motion, like they were long lost lovers and they gave big hugs to each other. And Aaron said, um, I can feel you inside me. <laughs> <laughs> it was lovely. And, and it just got wilder and zanier and wackier. I mean, um, the, the celebrities were really relaxed because it's a very small convention. And so it was very intimate. Um, but we had he great people. Like it. And, yeah, no, it was, it was, I mean, you know, we're just sitting there and drinking beers with Michael Hogan every night. You know, he's just hanging out there by the bar. And, uh, and uh, yeah, and Aaron Douglas and uh, Paul, you know, very good drinking buddies for uh, being around. And uh, Tori Higginson was there and Claudia Christian. And uh, we just had a great, great crew. And uh, my friend, Cree Summer, Rainbow, uh, her brother came down from Canada. I mean, just had incredible people. And Jane Espenson... Um, I don't know if you know her, writer-producer from Buffy, Firefly, Caprica, uh, Battlestar Galactica. Now her big thing is Once Upon a Time. Uh, she came down and graced us with her awesomeness, and uh, we're going to have her back for uh, 2015. She brought her writing partner, Brad Bell, who was also an incredible insight into uh, screenwriting. Um, so they're going to be running a, a two two-hour writing workshops in 2015. Um, and uh, bringing a bunch of the Whedon-esque uh, verse people uh, along with them. Uh, we can't announce the names yet, but uh, we got some really great um, people from uh, Firefly and some other Whedon's type people coming. So nice. Uh, have, have you managed yeah. to hogtie Whedon and drag him along? Because I can't like, say anything yet. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a yes yet, to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you. Uh, uh, no, we we work, we we, uh, we have lined up some really good. I mean, uh, to give you an idea, our convention was only 750 people, and we don't expect more than about a thousand next year. But we're bringing in uh, Steve Blum, who's one of the top voice actors. He won the Guinness Book of World Records for most video games voiced. He also is very in, holds a dear place in my heart for Spike Spiegel from Cowboy Bebop, the best anime series ever. Um, he's also done, he does Anon and, on uh, Legend of Korra and tons of other stuff. I mean, if you look at his credits, you just go on and on. Uh, we're also bringing Melissa Fawn from Cowboy Bebop, uh, Mary Elizabeth McLean, who played uh, the lead in Ghost in the Shell uh, in its various incarnations, um, bringing back Cree Summer, who's also an incredible voice actor, um, bringing uh, Bill Morrison, he's the artist on Simpsons. He helped create the Simpsons and helped. Uh, he does the art direction on uh, Futurama, and he's going to be dragging some big names from that verse. Can't announce anything on that yet. Um, so what you're saying and, is, if I'm flying out there to you, I need to bring a second suitcase so I can put my bender head in it. <laughs> exactly, and and tons <laughs> of and tons of stuff to sign because oh. we're just having amazing people. Aaron Douglas are, is going to come back. Um, Michael Hogan will probably come back. He really wants to. We just have to work out some details. Um, and we have great cosplay uh, cosplayers coming, and they're going to be teaching cosplay workshops. Um, and what's incredible about our convention, besides the location, because we're right on the beach, um, is that uh, Hawaii, our island, has the largest connections of deep space telescopes in the world. And so we, we have a whole track of... Um, uh, astronomy and deep space exploration where we bring in some of the top NASA people and people working on exoplanets. Um, they're also testing a lot of the Mars equipment here on the island. So we're bringing in a bunch of people from Mars. Last year we had um, Bob Ferdowsi, who uh, was one of the uh, chief engineers on the Curiosity mission. Nice. Um, yeah, and Curiosity would have had a good view last night. Lucky <laughs> little rover. Damn, yeah. watching the comet up close. We're actually going to be able to, we, we've snagged the prototype for Curiosity, and it's going to be uh, uh, doing a little uh, demo at our con next year. And uh, so it's just, 
it's no, incredible it because we are steal it and throw it in my suitcase and sneak <laughs> it back to australia i think it weighs like a ton so i don't know nah, I'll, I'll take it and carry on they won't notice yeah um no it's it was it was a fantastic experience i mean it was our first year so that there were the normal bumps but i i got up in the morning at seven in the morning and I get in the water and go take a snorkel and see all the fishies. And I come out and there's Claudia Christian from Babylon 5 getting into the water for her morning swim. And I walk out a little bit farther and there's two or three celebrities like Aaron Douglas and Tori Higginson all just hanging out and getting their morning sun before the panels get in. So it's just, it's, it's an incredible, incredible experience. I highly, highly recommend it. It's unlike any other con. The celebrities said that we basically ruined them for all other conventions. Um, <laughs> Because, yeah, because it was like, <laughs> it was spoiled and rotten. I mean, it was right on the beach. We put them up in these gorgeous suites and oceanfront rooms, and then uh, they go to sound, uh, go to sleep at the sound of the waves. And, um, and we have a very low pressure environment, uh, and we have a no diva policy. So, you know, it's a lot of, you know, nobody has giant egos. Everybody's just having a good time. Nice. Yeah, it sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, it was, it was a total blast. Uh, um, there was something else, but as just, always, just, to, for the smoothness of the show, I have absolutely forgotten it. <laughs> <laughs> just getting back to your suitcase comment, David, yeah. um, where you said you need to take two over there, uh, just thinking seriously about it, it'd be cheaper to just buy your suitcase over there. No, no, no. Yeah. See, see, in order to go over there, if I was going to go to the, with the people he announced, I'd have to go with my McKay cos cosplay. I mm -hmm. right. take my bender head for my um, DVD collection. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. At least some of my Stargate stuff. That's half a suitcase already full, and I haven't even got to the stuff I'm actually going to wear while I'm in Hawaii, which yeah. probably won't be much because it's Hawaii. But yeah. Yeah. then I don't want to scare small children because I'm a fat guy. So. <laughs> uh, well, so, the so, last thing I want to do is mentally scar everybody that's there. So there uh, I'm, I'm sure we've all. In there. Uh, I'm sure. I'm we'll... sure you could come up with a good cosplay that works for it. Yeah. Jabba the Hutt. Uh, <laughs> I think we've all... Uh, 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 no, no, no. I've got to go with the Hawaii theme. Jabba the Hutt in a bikini. Oh, my God. Yeah, yes. yeah. That would definitely give children nightmares for years. <laughs> I just use my slogan, dare to blink. Because I'm that, but I have to blink. <laughs> like, oh, God, it burns, it burns. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, for, we're approaching the last sort of 15-ish minutes of the show, and um, I'm going to throw us into the Battlestar Galactica talk, because it's about their 10th Resurrection Day. I don't want to call it their birthday, because Battlestar Galactica was all about resurrection, and it was effectively a resurrection when they came back. So on Battlestar Galactica, what was your guys' sort of favorite parts of the, the, new, the newer series of it? I never watched it. <laughs> oh my god. Crucify that man. <laughs> okay. The problem, he must the be problem a is, He Ian. must be a Cylon. <laughs> <laughs> Ian the, now the... officially has homework. <laughs> <laughs> do, you know, do, you know what, yeah. do you know what the problem was with the series though? The, the miniseries started off quite bumpy. And that's where they lost a lot of the fan base before they even started. That, that's where they lost me. Yeah, the, the the miniseries was a bit all over the place, and season one was did take a bit of getting used to, but I think they've well, really I, found I, the stride in sort of season two and three, and by the end of season three, they knew what they were doing. At which point, they were cancelled. So... You shouldn't. You should know what you're doing from season one onwards. You shouldn't well, they, have to yes, make actually, it from season I one onwards. Have, I actually have a copy of the show Bible that they had before they started, and they really did know where they were going. Not like Lost. They actually did have the character arcs already written. They had the show arc already written. So they really had a good idea on where they were going. Where they were going to end up, you know, the whole ending thing, I don't think that they knew that. Um, but they definitely had... A good idea on on the whole journey of it, and uh, the the I, you know, the whole incarnation of taking a like a 1950s 1960s aircraft carrier kind of feel, and that drama and capturing that but setting it in space. I think that they really did. Uh, they, they they captured something very human. You know, I think that sometimes that. Uh, um, 
that uh, uh, science fiction gets a little bit campy around the edges. And uh, I think it's okay for certain kinds of things, because like Farscape and Doctor Who, it's good to be a little bit campy because they're, that works with the worlds that they're creating. But when you're trying to go for something that's a little bit more realistic and uh, has a lot of real world references, like the Abu Ghraib uh, thing that they did with the waterboarding, um, I, you know, you have to take it a little more seriously. And I think that they really grounded it in something that felt really real. And that's, I think that's what's special and sets it apart. Yeah, and I actually really enjoyed the, the uniqueness of the ship design, especially mm. their FTL style. Yeah. Everyone, all the other shows that I can think of off the top of my head all use sort of linear-based FTL. You've got to be moving in a specific direction forwards at a certain speed before you can sort of jump to faster than light, whether it's hyperspace, warp, whatever, whatever it is. Um, mm. Battlestar Galactica was the, was the only one that I can think of, with the exception of maybe Starburst in Farscape, where you could be parked in a specific spot and then jump without moving, just you're gone. And they did it, they used that really, really well, especially in the Siege of New Caprica mm. and the, the finale, I think, they used the, the FTL style definitely to its sort of peak capabilities. So we, we need a pocket version of them because we're married. <laughs> so, yeah. um, and I, I did like the whole it had a very sort of the Galactica had a very battleship sort of feel to it which was the point it's a battle star and the Cylon ships being sort of instead of being projectile ba like solid shell based like the, the Galactica was they were missile based it was almost yeah. like a World War 2 battleship being exactly. brought forward to now and going up against current missile bolts, boats and holding its own, and I really love that. I love the way they did the space, like the with the Vipers, it was a lot better, way better done than say Star Wars or even Stargate in a lot of respects for their space battles. Right, because that those things are still uh, kind of mimicking the aerodynamics of atmospheric flight, whereas. Um, Battlestar Galactica is going along the lines of Babylon Five, where there's it's it's a 360 degree uh, world. It's not even beyond that. It's a it's a it's a spherical kind of bat, uh, battle situation where it's any angle, you know. Yeah. Um, I would love to see a Viper take on one of the Star Furies. <laughs> that would be an awesome fight. <laughs> Somebody's probably yes. working it on in some visual effects lab right now. They're yeah. bored to crap and they're probably working on it. <laughs> 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 That'd be a nice it. project. There you go, Internet. There's a mission for you. I want to see Vipers vs. Star Furies by the end of the month. I don't <laughs> see that. I'm, don't, I don't know where you live. I don't know who you are, but I will find you and I'll make you do it. <laughs> <laughs> so did you guys see Stargate Universe? Uh, yeah. Some of us. I, I felt like that they were trying to do... Uh, the Battlestar Galactica drama, and, and I felt like they kind of failed. I didn't, I didn't yeah. watch past the first season, but I definitely think that they were, season, they saw what Battlestar was doing and tried to do it. Yeah, season two got better. Mm -hmm. They really yeah. sort of like a lot of. I've noticed in sci-fi, it's, it's really sort of systemic that season one and almost every sci-fi series falls into this. Mm. Season one, they sort of struggle. They're looking for their feet. They, they, they. That's where they you sort of see that a lot of the bad stories are almost always in either season one or somewhere near the middle. Um, and yeah. look at Stargate SG One. A lot of the early episode, sort of season episodes, they're trying to find their feet. They just mm. happen to get lucky and get picked up for two continuous seasons off the bat, so they could get past that season one hurdle. Firefly, sort of the first one or two episodes of that, and people are going to hate me for this. Um, were a little bit sort of wishy washy, and after that they got good. Um, and it just yeah, I hate you for that. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say, what did you say about Firefly? Where do you do you live now? <laughs> yeah, exactly. There's a bunch of brown coats now ready to bang down your door. <laughs> I'm, I'm gonna get my little dragon to blink. Helicopters outside. <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was just sort of. That's, the Stargate universe sort of fell into that same trap. A lot of its early sort of episodes were very sort of, what is the problem we have this week? It's sort of, instead of it being Monster of the Week, it was Problem of the Week, and that became really sort of buried down in it. Do you know, the do you end know? of sort of season one, they sort of got away from that. And by the end of season two, I think it had really found its stride. And do you know what the problem is, though, with season one? 
is each episode they virtually became the next episode different planet. Yeah. And they were virtually just jumping from planet to planet with almost the same storyline and just a slight twist. Yeah. Where season two they got that depth to it and by the time they canned it it was actually going quite well in my books yeah. and I love the, the the evil element to it yeah. um, I, I love that it's it it was actually starting to go quite well yeah. and I, I'd, I'd love to see even just to like a, a movie sort of conclusion to that um, <laughs> you but, kill them all <laughs> <laughs> well, on, <laughs> on that note we have um, me and a group of mates actually wrote a bit of a conclusion to the story we sort of expanded on it a bit and added a couple of different things and we turned it into a mod for Empire at War Force of Corruption which was taken down because of copyright issues. So that happened. <laughs> really? So yeah, yeah. We had it so that um, just before e- Eli couldn't fix the FTL and just before he sort of uh, sorry, couldn't fix the stasis pod uh, and just before he sort of ran out of resources the systems went nuts and diverted the course. And it took him to a space station that was sort of orbiting around the outside of the the galaxy itself and sort of docked with that. And that became sort of the hub. And from there, it sort of, we introduced a couple of new sorts of ships. So we had sort of a half-sized seed ship, which was the scout ship. And the ancients made about a thousand of them, which then searched all the different galaxies for resources and plotted where the planets are and stuff like that and relayed that information back to the second group of ships that were coming which is were the resource gathering ships which are similar in size to destinies and they harvested asteroids processed the raw materials and into different ores and whatnot and then plugged those into the seed ships which took the raw materials that had been processed and made the gates and it was we sort of set it up so it was this bigger sort of picture that was actually happening as these ships went and then it just sort of fell on its ass and died <laughs> so that's <laughs> as, as most sci fi. Yeah. So, so it was just one of those things. So, yeah. Anyway, we are running down to the last couple of minutes of the show. So, uh, starting with the randomly chosen person, Ian. Um, do you get to say the final hurrah? One last little shout out to the podcast and to let everyone know what it is one last time just before we head off. And I'll let you do that. Okay, there's no need to raise your pitch at the end of every sentence. Sure, there is. Uh, uh, it's a, I notice it's actually a very Australian thing <laughs> to do that. It sounds like every time you finish a sentence, it's like you're asking a question. It, yeah. I don't even know why I do it. Uh, probably just I, habit that you've picked up from being around certain people. I, I, I normally do it when I'm thinking. And right. My brain is busy doing other things. Anyway, yes, continue. Your podcast, go for it. <laughs> yes, my podcast, which generally is 5 p.m., starts at 5 p.m. Australian Eastern Standard Time on Sunday afternoons, uh, but it goes to YouTube after that, so you can watch and or listen to it whenever you feel like it. It's uh, me and three other guys, an American, uh, a British citizen, and another Australian talking about various aspects of popular culture. What's the next one going to be? Do you know? Uh, the previous one was Lego. The next one's getting a bit more heavy intellectual. The next topic is story and character development. Oh. <laughs> sounds, sounds right up DC's alley. Kill them all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I think we've got our lines crossed. I think we've accidentally connected to, with uh, George R.R. Martin. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a little bit like him. <laughs> <laughs> so, DC, one last plug to the books. What a uh, tell us about okay. the Star Crystal. I got it right. Ooh, I so got it right. <laughs> the, the, the Star Crystal, you got it right. I'm on Facebook <laughs> and internet. <laughs> Pretty much strays, felines, trying to say if there are home or get to the home planet and save it. Captain Scriker, a smuggler and a thief, doing everything he can to get there. Um, and the company's hot on their heels. And the second book, you get to meet the creator. So stay tuned and dare to blink and it may all be gone. Thanks, Mike. Nice. And last but not least, the man himself, GB. 
Aloha, you guys. You have a good time. And uh, Waikon is September 2015. Hey, I got to compete with a dog? Oh, my God. Somebody kill the dog. Oh, my God. <laughs> GB versus the dog. Ding, ding. Okay, I lost. I lost against the dog. Okay, uh, Hawaii Con is September 2015. Uh, tickets are on discount pre sales right now until January 1st. You can find out more about tickets at hawaiicon.com or also uh, at Facebook, Hawaii Con. So, hope to see you guys there. Great. Thank you guys very much for joining us on the. the first Thanks, man. I killed the dog, so. by the way. <laughs> 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 Didn't you hear the? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, I appreciate it. <laughs> Not a problem, Tom. <laughs> no animals were hurt during the recording of this podcast, except the birds and the, dog. <laughs> and, the and, and one dog, dog. and, and one the wife and, and one Jeez. dragon that bleeps too much. Uh, he, he stole the microphone at one stage. <laughs> Um, I shall catch you guys in the next podcast. I'm going to start playing the outro music, hopefully not at deafening level like last time. Uh, now it seems to be nice and quiet. Woo, nice and quiet music. Um, so I will catch you guys in the next podcast. It starts okay. at uh, 7 p.m. Queensland time, so Australian Eastern uh, Standard Time, or 8 p.m. Uh, New South Wales Victoria time, or actually I have no idea what time is it over in Perth. It's now 6 p.m. So it starts at 5 p.m. Starts at 5. 5 p.m. Perth time, and for what time is it in Hawaii? Just for curiosity. It's it's midnight. <laughs> midnight. That all. Oh. It's midnight on Sunday. Midnight so. on Sunday. Yeah. <laughs> it's time to start drinking. <laughs> I just have to get up and go to work. Thanks for having me. Um, Thank you. Yep.